Well, I, I had really thought about what it is I wanted to do tonight and uh, in trying to tie it into this value of social creation uh, program. And it might seem strange for a company or an industry that is, for all practical purposes, known as the biggest polluter in the country to have a concern over that and try to figure out a way to change so that we can actually be a participant in what's going on in the world and make a win-win for our customers, our shareholders, our employees, and, and society in general. But there really is a true purpose to this. And, and it's an exciting thing. I just went on a board of another utility, and, uh, and I'm very excited about it because the, I just spent a whole meeting talking about how to reduce energy consumption and demand. Now think about that. It's a company who for a hundred years, primary purpose was to sell more electricity next year than it sold the year before. But suddenly we find ourselves in a place where our goal is to use less of the very product that we make. How does that make sense? I'm gonna to try to show you through some charts today how some of that works and why I personally find this whole role in the utility business right now to be one of a lot of personal satisfaction and maybe it'll pique in some of you the idea that it may not be such a bad place to have a career because what we are facing as an industry some of the most challenging times that we have ever seen and it is absolutely essential to the growth of this nation that we get it right. There is no one who believes that there will be economic growth, again, without ample and reliable and reasonably priced electricity. I can't find anybody who thinks we can get there without it. And so we welcome the opportunity as an industry to participate that. that uh. All right, where are we? Well, we're in an interesting time. We're just like we are in the rest of the economy. Uh, many companies have cut, cut back on construction because of the tight financial constraints. But even at that, this industry expects to spend, on average, about 6% of its rate base, which is plant and service, every year for the, about the next 10 years. The, a recent Brattle study came out and said that we're going to spend as an industry $1.6 trillion over the next 20 years just putting up wires. That's not building power plants. That's just modernizing and keeping the electric system going. That's a lot of money to raise for an industry. Wholesale prices are down. Commodity prices are down. I'm sure you all have seen that, uh, except we're now starting to see it come up again at the gas pump, which may be good or bad, depending on your view. And we've had reduced demand. So a lot of people now are saying, well, we're not going to need all this because demand's gone down. Well, there's a new study, and uh, just in case you read the Wall Street Journal, uh, SARA, which is a pretty well-known organization, puts on a, a, a program every year. Their forecast is 30% growth in electricity over the next 20 years. So they don't forecast, no one is forecasting it's going to stay down. What we really think happened is it probably took like a couple of year jump. Now that's going to be different by geographics. If you're in the Midwest and that was an automobile factory, chances are it's not going to open. But that's not everywhere, not in this region in particular, where actually, you know, if the federal government keeps going, it just continues to expand. There's also a lot of money going into this. And uh, we've been spending money on energy conservation, which has had an effect on demand. So it's a, sort of a blip right now. There's been a lot of money put out by the federal government to modernize the system. They came up with about $4 billion in grants. And locally, for instance, uh, the PEPCO, the local utility here that I was, used to be with, uh, got about $200 million to install smart meters, which is something I'll talk to you about, which is the smart grid. And that really is a big plus because that's going to make a huge difference. And uh, it's nice to have Uncle Sam pay for some of it. Climate legislation. If you had asked me three months ago or six months ago, I would have said slam dunk. <laughs> going to happen. Today, every day, I read something that's different. The latest is, and I'll Maybe I'll get a chance to talk about cap and trade, but it's basically a, a, an economic way to curtail carbon. And now they're talking about something that's not cap and trade. They're talking about doing something that's industry specific, which would mean the utility industry would get hammered first because it's the easiest to attack 
because we're stationary, we can't go anywhere, and you don't drive us every day like you do a car. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a popular way to come at the problem, and I'm sure the industry will be, have a very unfavorable reaction to that. The problem is we've got all this money to spend, and at the moment, it's an industry that's stressed. The average credit rating of a utility is triple B. Uh, in the 80s, it was either double A or A uh, rated utilities. Uh, we were able to get through this crisis. So now I heard uh, just a recent presentation by someone from S&P who says maybe triple B is not so bad. Personally, if I had to raise a few billion dollars, I'd much rather be at double A. The problem is the only way you could do that is to sell common stock and 25% of the industry is selling below book value. That's not a good place to be if you have to go out and raise capital. So at the moment, the market's not treating utilities very favorably because they have to spend the money, yet they're going to have to spend the money in order to modernize the system so in a way it kind of gets into a little bit of a vicious circle. So right now it's a very interesting time in the industry. Climate, as I mentioned, it looks like fatigue's wearing, setting in. Uh, you know, healthcare is just sort of taking all the life out of Congress. Uh, maybe that's good or bad, depending on your view. Uh, it looks like we did get a jobs bill. Uh, personal two cents, I think job credits are a waste of time, but that's okay. <laughs> that's the way they want to go. You don't hire somebody just to get a tax credit. You usually would rather have them do productive work. Uh, Kerry, Graham, Lieberman seem to be the leaders in the Senate. Uh, they're making headway. Uh, I talked to a couple of my uh, ex-friends uh, in the, or they're still my friends, but uh, ex-people that I knew, <laughs> and they met with them and they won't tell them where this is going. I think the answer is they don't know. According to what I read today, Obama had a uh, come to Jesus meeting with a few of them and said, we've got to come up with something, but they won't say what it is they're doing. And I think they're struggling because I don't think they know what to do, absent some uh, cap and trade, which now, according to the latest words I heard, are words we just don't want to say. So I don't know where it's going to go. The worst situation is to impose something that says you have to take carbon out but not give the industry some solution to get from A to B <laughs> because there is only one solution and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So uh, there's a, one of the big issues in this is if you do charge for carbon, please don't think it's not going to be expensive. It's going to raise your electric rates. It's going to raise the rate you pay for natural gas. It's going to raise the price at the pump. It's going to raise the price of everything you buy. It's going to cost more to get a tomato from Florida to the district than it did before. How do you solve that problem in this economic crisis? Well, one of the proposals is what they call cap and dividend. So you, this is where you put a cap on, charge everybody the tax, and then you give it back. So you charge everybody the tax on it. Let's take gasoline. No matter where you live, it's 25 cents. So if you live in Washington State, you pay 25 cents more a gallon, and you pay 25 cents more here. It goes into the cabin. And then they redistribute it based on income. If you actually look at the statistics, that is a huge redistribution of wealth throughout the United States. Because in Washington State, they use mostly hydro. In this region, 60% of the energy you get comes from coal. Your rates are going to go up much higher than their rates, yet the program would be give this money back on a universal way. The industry is very opposed to that. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, what, what, what our proposal is. But in the reality, right now, as you know, like with health care, 60 votes, who knows? And uh, there is a proposal. Uh, about something that you may have read about in the paper, the, a court determined that greenhouse gas is a pollutant. That gives the EPA the power to regulate greenhouse gas. They have very limited means to regulate those kinds of things. Most of it's called, uh, not new source, but basically uh, whatever the best engineering or scientific approach is, a commercial that's available. There is none to take carbon out. So they've done it for sulfur, they've done it for mercury, but there was a, actually a commercial solution. So the industry and, and a lot of people are trying to kill that so that it gives Congress the, 
the time to put in something that's a more rational way to deal with carbon because it affects so much 